Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and because of the last video that I did kind of like this, I'm going to do another one. It's going to be a question and answer because I brought up that a lot of people were asking about what machines to use, which ones I'd recommend. I really know nothing about any other machines. However, if you followed the comments on that video, several people put some good information down there and a couple of links to uh, show you these other kits that you can get. So I'm going to run over to the CNC room here real shortly. First thing I'm going to talk about though is uh, your spindle, your router that you're actually using. The first thing you really want to look at is the size that you're going to use. For me, I got a 3 kilowatt, 3kW, and that's roughly like 2.2 horsepower, somewhere in there. I can't remember, to be quite honest. But it's a little bigger, it may be closer to a three horsepower. I don't remember the, how, what the conversion is. But what you need to look at there is the spindle you're gonna use gonna run off 110 or is it gonna run off 220? For me personally, my run, mine runs off 220. It's a bigger spindle, it's a lot more horsepower, a lot more torque. So I wanted the heavier duty spindle, which is not always necessary. It just allows me to work a little faster. The way I pulled this off, my shop does not run off my house. I've got my own transformer for this shop. I've got my own meter for this shop simply because I have a lot of power tools and I didn't want to put the extra strain on the feed to my house. So that's why I get away with doing a 220. Not all of them are that way. You can get them that are 110. They're just going to be a smaller motor and they're going to have less speed and less torque. Still fine. They still work. So to just give you an idea how big this spindle actually is, next to my hand, I mean, it's a pretty good size spindle. This one is 2.2 kilowatts. I just verified that while ago. It's not as big as what I thought. The reason I thought that is because this actually isn't my first spindle. While I was wiring this thing up, I had just got it pieced together and just loosely had it wired just to see if it would kick on and I had it wired correctly. Well, I did, until one of the wires slipped loose, grounded out, blew up the VFD, which is the controller of the spindle, and so I had to take my first spindle out. This is a three kilowatt. This is a bigger spindle than the one I have. I believe the spindle is still okay, but the reason that I went with a completely different deal is because they were selling in kits and to buy the spindle and the VFD with it, there wasn't much difference in just doing getting the VFD and the spindle or just the VFD. So I, I screwed up. I mean, I don't know what else to say. So my recommendation on that is just kind of know how much power you're going to want, how much torque you're going to want. And I'm always the big proponent of you can't overkill it. So if you go bigger than what you actually need, so what? It's there if you need it. But if you go smaller than what you actually need, now you've got a problem because you can't make up that power anywhere else. So as many of you know, I use Mach 3, which is the computer at the end of the table. That's my controller software. It's what I run the machine with. So I was in a conversation with somebody that's building the machine and they were asking me about Mach 4. Mach 4 was actually out when I bought this. The difference is with Mach 4, you're going to use a USB system. Now, I'm going to try not to get super technical and lose everybody, but the kind of breakout board, which is a little computer board that's down in the box that all the drivers go to to run the motors, is a parallel port. That is kind of old school. The newer ones actually have USB plug-ins on them. So, in order to do that, you have to have Mach 4. I did go a little older school than what was out at the time simply because I understand that technology better. The USB stuff, everything I'd read, they were having lots of problems with it. Now everything I'm hearing about it is good things. They've got all the little kinks worked out for the most part and it's good systems. So as far as that goes or what kind of breakout board you should get, you're going to have to judge that. If you get one that is ran off USBs, you better look at Mach 4 as your controlling software. Now, 
I don't know if you can run the USBs off Mach 3. I just know everybody points towards Mach 4 when they start talking USBs. Just something else you need to think about when you start this build. So the next thing I've been asked several times is what do I think a good size table is? Again, we're, we're going to get down to what you're really wanting to do with it. Uh, you're wanting to make really big stuff, obviously like a 5 foot by 10 foot. If you're wanting to do just mid-range stuff, kind of like I do most of the time, smaller signs, a 4x4 four four is good. And I've seen them, you know, down 2 foot by 3 foot. And those do little bitty things. You can buy those reasonably, and that would get you started. It would like, let you learn the software and how to program so you can upgrade if you want to go that route. I'm just not that guy. I've always been to jump in with both feet and let's make this dude work, and I make it the size I want. Now then, would I like to have a 5 by 10 Sure. Am I going to build one? No. I know how much time and effort I have into this one, and the actual reason that I built it is because I always felt like if I built it and something breaks, I know the guy that built it, I can fix it. That was my logic behind this. So if down the road I can afford a 5x10 or a 4x8, would I do it? If the money was right, I might. Because I would really like to do some bigger stuff. I would like a machine with all the factory safeties on it. All the little extra proximity switches, uh, all the extra little safety features that are on these things. Because here's what I really love about an industrial machine. I know they tell you you can't just completely walk off and leave them, but I would feel more comfortable walking off and leaving a machine with all the proper safeties on it and running in the house getting something to drink. Mine has next to zero safeties. My safety's right here. I just sit here and watch, and when things start going wrong, I kill it. And it happens from time to time. It's not real often, but it does occur. So that would be my thing if I could upgrade this machine to have all the proper safety switches. I just don't know that I would feel comfortable leaving it running while I'm not here. I mean, it's just one of those things that, you know, I've got a lot of time and money invested in this thing. Don't want to tear it up just because I'm too lazy to stay out here. Okay, another question was uh, actual size of the frame outside to outside. Okay, well, since I've got three inch square tubing, on all four corners. The machine's actually, or the table's actually 55 inches by 55 inches. I mean, almost exactly. Reason being is my box, my tabletop, does not fit snug in there. I left about a half inch on each end, or each side of it, so I could slide this thing in and out as needed. So the table is actually, or the wood top is actually 48 inches. Then you add in the six inches for the Square tubing, which is 54, then a half inch on each side of it, making 55. Now the length of it, the y-axis of it, it is 55. The reason I went that route is I just wanted the table coming all the way up to the edge. That way when I'm doing any kind of work, I have a little extra area here to work on. And like, I do my painting right there on the table. Throw me an old piece of wood down, paint right there on top of it. Has worked out well for me. And the next one is usually the programming software. I get asked a lot about different kinds. Again, I'm, I'm not real knowledgeable. I messed with Fusion 360 a little bit, and I messed with it on a trial. I messed with Vectric on a trial. It was just hands down Vectric for me. I just I found it so much easier to learn and pick up and use. It, it all made more sense to me the way it's set up. So I'm a complete Vectric guy when it comes to that. I mean, I've got obviously the top of the line for Vectric, which I've told the story before, it was a <laughs> lucky day at a casino and I won the money to pay up by the big package. So that's actually how I have it. Now then, does everybody need it? Probably not. 95% of what I do, VCarve will do, or VCarve Pro. 95% of what I make is covered in VCarve. That 5% is when I'm doing 3D stuff. Love to do 3D stuff. The reason I don't do more of 3D stuff some of it may take two or three hours to cut. And if y'all couldn't tell, I'm a little impatient. <laughs> I don't like sitting around waiting and watching because that's literally all I'm doing while the video camera's running is I'm just sitting here watching the machine run. And the beauty of y'all's side of it is you're getting to watch it at eight times the speed. I'm watching it at actual speed, so it's literally just going... <laughs> Not that I mind it, other than I'd love for it to be a little faster. 
nothing I can do about that. That's just not the way this machine's set up. So that'll bring me full circle back to what I was talking about spindles. If you're wanting to run faster, you've got to have a big spindle because you've got to have your RPMs way up there in order to let the machine move faster. And still, it's not always a good idea. The one I have here will do 22,000 RPMs. The other one that was a bigger actually only did 18,000 RPMs. I seldom run it at 22,000 RPMs. It's usually right at 16,000 to 16,5. I've just found that's a good speed for me cutting most things that I cut, and I've just stuck with it. There is no real science for that for me. I just tinkered with it until I found it where I thought, mm, that's a good spot. So the other thing you're gonna to have to realize is while you're doing this, you have to change those bits regularly. Because if you don't, you're gonna to start to get some drag, you're gonna to start to get some splintering, and on like V-bits, which I use all the time, if your bit starts to get a little dull, you'll start burning the wood. And you'll literally have burn spots. You'll notice, you'll see it smoke, and I've probably done it on here before. Just didn't realize it was time to change it. Just keep those things in mind. The bigger spindle means you'll be able to work it a little bit faster, but a smaller one would make it a more manageable machine because you will be able to move it around. This thing here has been sitting here for two years in its exact spot because to move it, that right there is a motor lift that will lift up to 2,000 pounds. I had to get that thing out here to move this thing. I figure it weighs somewhere between 800 and 1,000 pounds. Unbelievably heavy. So I know this probably wasn't the kind of video y'all were wanting tonight, uh, or today, I should say. It's tonight here. It's Thursday night. <laughs> but uh, I get asked these questions a lot, and I like to answer them in a timely manner when possible because who knows when somebody's right in the middle of a build and they're waiting on an answer, so they're trying to figure out how to do this, like the measurements, kind of like the spindle questions or the breakout boards, the Mach 3, the Mach 4. That kind of stuff's information you need to know right from the get-go to know which direction you're going to drive this thing because it makes a difference. I mean, if you get a spindle that's a 110 and you were planning on it being a 220, problem. So just things to look at. And like I said, I've got some things coming up. I've got some stuff programmed most of the way. Uh, there's another big reason I didn't get anything cut tonight is I'm not completely done programming the next couple of things I was gonna do. I've got just a few tweaks, messed with them most of the afternoon, didn't get quite there. So I figured I better answer the questions that I've got to ask over the last week, week and a half, and just give you that info. So guys, that's gonna be it. If y'all haven't done so yet, please subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time.